Hello and welcome to this 3DO webinar preview. This is a small sample of the original presentation, but if you'd like to view the full webinar, please click the link in the description below. Hey everyone, thank you for joining today. We can go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're going to be giving an overview and comparison of material jetting, uh, binder jetting, and our intelligent layering process. So we'll start with binder jetting. This is a very popular metal additive technology. Tell you a little bit about it. Um, just got a step-by-step -step process here. So you start by spreading a layer of powder from uh, a powder supply into the, the build area. So it's loose powder at this point, it gets spread into here. Then an inkjet head, which is very similar to a 2D printer inkjet head, it, it sprays a 2D pattern using an array of nozzles. Uh, it'll form and glue together in very specific locations the, the 2D shape of that part for a given layer. And then that binder is usually heated to cure it. It'll become a little bit harder and then you can spread on top of it again and you'll repeat that layer after layer until you have a, a part. After it's printed, there's usually a post-printing curing process where that part will go into an oven. This is a much lower temperature than the sintering that I mentioned before, but the part solidifies a little bit more enough so that you could depowder it, handle it, and then after that, it'll go to the sintering step. I have a nice video from X1 to show that process in a little more detail. Cool. So this is the inkjet head I mentioned. You can see it's making passes and selectively placing binder. That's what the dark spots are there. Then we'll have the heater come over and cure it. And then the recoder will drop an additional thin layer of powder on the top. And then we'll repeat that process again. And binder jetting is a pretty quick process, which is one of its strengths. You can see right here, once this thing gets up to full speed, it's moving pretty quickly. I know this is an anim animation, but uh, it is a fast process. Now, a little bit about 3DO's intelligent layering process. So the reason we get pushed or put into the binder jetting category is that we have a lot of similarities. We spread a fine layer of powder, we apply a binder to that powder, and then we have a heater that, that cures that binder. Where we have some difference here is that instead of selectively applying the binder to form the part geometry, we're uniformly spraying our entire layer with binder to get a really nice even coating of binder. And our part geometry is formed using a, a series of small micro end mills. So on our SAP frond platform, we can cut simultaneously with eight cutting tools. So our process is definitely focused on printing multiples of the same geometry in a production environment. And the reason we do that is we get basically machining tolerances on our green state parts in a really nice surface finish. There is some uh, change in tolerance as it goes through the sintering process, but to start with going into the sintering with our even application of binder and our cutting tools, we, we try to minimize as much the variation between the parts into that process. Uh, so again, just to start from the beginning, spread a layer of powder, bind the entire layer, apply a heater to cure it. Then we do the cutting step. We'll repeat that until the end of the build. And then we, we have a similar, we have a post-print cure, a depowdering step, and the final sintering step. So I got some animations and then I'll have a video to, to show you what, what this looks like in practice. Uh, but here we have our spread of powder, as I mentioned. Uh, let me stop that one. Binder is applied again, covering the entire surface, not selective to form the geometry like traditional binder jetting. Then we have our cutting operation where this is a, our series of eight end mills cutting. And you can see there's an array of the same part. And then right at the end, we take out the builds and continue through the rest of our production line. I have some actual video here of what it looks like. So this is from one of our partners, our customers that we've produced some jewelry for. 
This was within a promo video, but here's an actual video of our cutting process. This is the depowdering where the parts are removed from the surrounding material that will then be recycled to be reused. And the next step is the sintering step. You'll see a brief video of that. There we go. So this is our vacuum furnace that we center in. So material jetting is also referred to as droplet on demand. And unlike binder jetting, where there's an array of nozzles dropping onto a powder bed uh, and, it's, and it's placing binder, in this case, we have a, a single outlet usually. Sometimes there's an array of them but it's tracing a pattern and forming a very thin layer and the actual material of the part is coming out of that nozzle. So it's selectively placing a thin layer. It's then immediately cured with a UV light. And these layers are very thin. They're usually in the realm of 30 microns, which is about a little bit more than a, a thousandth of an inch. And then that process is repeated layer after layer and is, is a relatively simple process. The parts come out after that. I have another nice animation here from Proto 3000. So these are, in this case, an array of nozzles that are forming a part. There's a UV light in the green. Here's an actual example of, of the printing and a final part. You'll notice that this part has come out in a variety of colors, and that's one of the cool parts about material jetting that I'll get into. Thank you for watching this webinar preview from 3DO. To view the full webinar, please click the link in the description below. If you'd like to learn more about 3DO, please visit our website at www.3deo.co.